This video is about geometric series and when they converge and when they diverge. A geometric sequence is a sequence of the form a, a times r, a times r squared, a times r cubed, and so on for some numbers a and r. This can be written in the wrapped up notation a times r to the k, where k goes from 0 to infinity. For example, if a is 3 and r is 1 half, the sequence would be 3, 3 halves, 3 fourths, 3 eighths, and so on, which could be written as 3 times 1 half to the k, where k ranges from 0 to infinity. A geometric series is the series you get by adding all these numbers up. So that would be a plus a times r plus a times r squared, and so on, which can be written in summation notation as the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of a times r to the k. For our example, our series would be the following, which could be written as the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of 3 times 1 half to the k. Sometimes you might get a geometric series that's in disguise, like this one. If I write out the first few terms, notice that we're told to start with i equals 2. So plugging in i equals 2 here, I get negative 1 squared over 3 to the 2 times 2 minus 3. That's 1 over 3. If I plug in i equals 3, I get negative 1 cubed. That's over 3 to the 2 times 3. 3 minus 3, or negative 1 over 3 cubed, negative 1 27th. When i equals 4, I get 1 over 243. If I look at the ratio of consecutive terms, negative 1 27th divided by 1 third is negative 1 ninth. Similarly, the ratio here is also negative one ninth, suggesting that we might have a geometric series with ratio r of negative one ninth and first term coming from here of one third. But there's another way to see this that's less arithmetic intensive and makes use of exponent rules. If we look at the basic term and rewrite it using exponent rules, this is 3 to the 2i times 3 to the minus 3. I can rewrite the 3 to the 2i as 3 squared to the i, and the 3 to the minus 3 in the denominator becomes a 3 cubed in the numerator. Now I can group together all the pieces that are raised to the i-th power and write this as negative 1 ninth to the i times 3 cubed, or 27 times negative 1 ninth to the i. Writing like this, I can see that every time i increases by 1, I get another factor of negative 1 ninth multiplied in my expression. And therefore, the, this is a geometric series with ratio negative 1 ninth, as I saw before. Now you might think that the first term should be 27, but remember that i doesn't start at 0, it starts at 2. So the first term is going to be what I get, and get when I plug in the first value of i. So that's 27 times negative 1 ninth squared, which works out to 1 third as before. So we do have a geometric series with first term of 1 third and common ratio of negative 1 ninth. In fact, we could rewrite it in a more standard form as the sum of 1 third times negative 1 ninth to the k, where k ranges from 0 to infinity. Since k equals 0 in this expression corresponds to i equals 2 in this expression, k is equal to, can be thought of as equal to i minus 2, and this is really a re-indexing and simplification to get from this version to this version. As you may know, a geometric sequence converges to 0 when the common ratio, r, is between negative 1 and 1. It converges to a when r is equal to 1, and it diverges otherwise when r is less than or equal to negative 1 
or when r is greater than 1. We're assuming here that a is not equal to 0, since otherwise we'd have a very boring, though convergent, sequence of all zeros. I want to restate this convergence criteria in limit form, since we'll use it later. What it's saying is that when r is between negative 1 and 1, the limit, as k goes to infinity, of a times r to the k is 0. That's what it means to converge to 0. When r is equal to 1, that limit is equal to a. And when r is less than or equal to negative 1 or greater than 1, that limit does not exist as a finite number. Now I'd like to find similar rules in terms of r for when a geometric series converges or diverges. Again, we'll assume that a is not equal to 0. Since otherwise, I just have a sum of a bunch of zeros, a boring series that would converge to 0. Our strategy is going to be to find a formula for the nth partial sum of the series, and then take the limit of partial sums, since by definition, that limit tells us whether the series converges or diverges. Before we carry out that strategy, I want to consider one special case when r is equal to 1. Then the series is just a plus a plus a, and so that diverges to infinity if a is positive, or to negative infinity if a is negative. Remember, we're assuming that a is not 0. So far as 1, our series diverges, and from now on, we'll assume that r is not equal to 1. Let's look at a few partial sums. The first partial sum, s sub 1, is just the first term a. s sub 2 is a plus a times r, and so on. In general, the nth partial sum, s sub n, is a plus a times r, plus a times r squared. And I continue until, let's see, the last term will be a times r to the n minus 1. The second to last term will be a times r to the n minus 2. Notice that the nth partial sum only goes up to a times r to the n minus 1, since we're starting at a, which is a times r to the 0. I'd like to write the partial sum in a nicer form, so I don't have to write all those dot, dot, dots. And to do that, I'm going to use a trick. I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by r. So on the left, I get r times s sub n. And on the right, I'm going to multiply each term by r. So the first term becomes a times r the second term a times r squared, a times r cubed, and so on. The second to last term becomes a times r to the n minus 1, and the last term becomes a times r to the n. Notice that this equation and the equation under it have a lot of terms in common. They match up along the diagonals. So if I subtract the second equation from the first, on the left side, I'm going to get s sub n minus r times s sub n. But on the right side, a lot of my terms will cancel. This term will cancel with the next one. This one cancels with the previous one. And what I'm left with is just a minus a times r to the n. I get a minus sign here because I'm subtracting the whole equation. Now I can solve for s sub n. I can factor it out. I'll factor out the a also just to keep things tidy. And then I get that s sub n is a times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. I don't have to worry about dividing by 1 minus r. That can't be 0 because, remember, I'm assuming that r is not 1. Now that I have a nice tidy formula for s sub n, I can proceed to take the limit as n goes to infinity and see if my sequence of partial sums converges or diverges. So that's the limit of my formula. And notice that the only part of this formula that depends on n is the r to the n. a, 1, 1 minus r are all constants as far as n's concerned. So we can use limit rules to take those out of the limit. I can rewrite the limit as a over 1 minus r times the limit of 1 minus r to the n, or even better, as a over 1 minus r times 1 minus the limit of r to the n. Now this limit I've seen before, right on this page. It's the same as the limit I was considering when I was looking at convergence of sequences, where 
I use the same r, and my a is equal to 1. So we know that this limit goes to 0 when r is between negative 1 and 1 and does not exist as a finite number when r is less than or equal to negative 1 or r is greater than 1. Therefore, the limit of the partial sums is going to equal a over 1 minus r times 1 minus 0, which is just a over 1 minus r, when r is between negative 1 and 1. And that limit will not exist as a finite number when r is less than or equal to negative 1 or r is greater than 1. Since the limit also doesn't exist as a finite number when r is 1, I can add a little equality sign. And now I've got all the cases for r covered. Let me write this down as a conclusion. The geometric series converges to a over 1 minus r for r between negative 1 and 1. I can also say that's the absolute value of r less than 1. And it diverges for the absolute value of r greater than or equal to 1. Let's use this fact in this example. Remember that we decided that this was a geometric series with common ratio r equal to negative 1 ninth. And we found the first term a by plugging in i equals 2 and got that first term of 1 third. Since the absolute value of r, the absolute value of negative 1 ninth, is 1 ninth, which is less than 1, we know that the series converges. And it converges to a over 1 minus r. So that's 1 third over 1 minus negative 1 ninth, which is 1 third over 1 plus 1 ninth. That's 1 third over 10 ninth which simplifies to 3 tenths. In this video, we looked at geometric series with first term a and common ratio r. We saw that a geometric series will converge if the absolute value of r is less than 1, and it'll diverge if the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1. In the case that it converges, it converges to a over 1 minus r, where a is the first term and r is the common ratio.